Brigade Mila Folta. Good evening and welcome to the 2020 Unpussed Irish Book Awards ceremony. And I'm delighted to be your host for tonight. Now, usually at this time of year, the Irish Book family would be gathering together, dressed to the nines, anticipation would be building, nerves would be jangling, and the event, also known as the book industry's own Christmas party, would be bursting into life. But this year, we've had to do a quick rewrite. And tonight we are coming to you virtually from the beautiful Museum of Literature Ireland here on Stephen's Green in the heart of Dublin City. Now, for obvious reasons, I have Molly all to myself tonight. But don't be worried, I'll be having a great night with you all as so many of our friends from the book world will be joining me to celebrate our wonderful writers. Out there in the comfort of their homes right now are a lot of very nervous authors waiting to hear who the winners will be of the 2020 Unpussed Irish Book Awards. To all of you, we salute you and we thank you so much for the books which have helped us all through such a difficult year. Best of luck to you all. To get us started, here's the Managing Director of Unpussed Retail, Debbie Byrne. Good evening everyone and welcome to the 2020 Unpussed Irish Book Awards. We're delighted to welcome you all this evening. A bit of a different evening than we might have had in prior years, but nonetheless we have a great evening um, and event planned for you. I'd like to welcome all the first time nominees. It's not the usual glitz and glamour, but nonetheless, I'm sure it'll be an exciting and nail biting evening for you all. Unpost is really delighted to be associated with the Irish Book Awards um, and indeed associated with the remarkable power of reading um, and the vital skill um, of literacy. I'm really happy to announce tonight that Unpost are extending our sponsorship of the Irish Book Awards for another two years. It's really been a difficult year for all small businesses, the length and breadth of the country. And we're really delighted that we've been able to um, support independent Irish book sellers across the country as they've had to move their businesses online and adapt their business model. I know there's a lot of nervous people out there waiting for uh, the events to kick off. And wherever you are yourself at home tonight, I invite you also to sit back, relax and really enjoy the evening. Earlier today, our awards were dispatched by Unpust, and all over the country, some of our finest and most popular authors are waiting in anticipation of a knock on the door or a chime of their bell. So now it's time to find out where our first award will land tonight, and it's the Book Selling Ireland Cookbook of the Year. And in a year where many of us have battled with banana bread recipes and struggled with sourdough, never have cookbooks been so important to us. So here are six new candidates to add to your cookbook collection. Presenting the award is Bookselling Ireland Chairperson Heidi Murphy, but first, here are the ingredients. Bookselling Ireland Cookbook of the Year. Cloda's Weeknight Kitchen by Cloda McKenna with Dora Kazmirak Photographer. The Happy Pair, Vegan Cooking for Everyone by David and Stephen Flynn. The Daily Dish by Gina Daly and Carol Daly. Nevin Maguire's Midweek Meals in Minutes by Nevin Maguire. The Joy of Food by Rory O'Connell. No Fuss Vegan by Roz Purcell. Thanks Evelyn. I'm thrilled to be with you tonight as Chair of Bookselling Ireland to present our award. We at Bookselling Ireland are very proud of the close collaborative relationship we enjoy both with Unpust and with the Unpust Irish Book Awards and long may that continue. Now on to business. The award for Bookselling Ireland Cookbook of the Year goes to Nevin Maguire for Nevin Maguire's Midweek Meals and Minutes. Congratulations, Nevin. Oh my God, yes! Look what I've got in the post. Look at this. Mm, I am so happy. I am overawed and just very, very proud. Well, um, thank you to each and everyone who, um, who first of all, voted for me, for the sponsors, and for me to Gill Books, for their belief in me, because this, I've wrote a lot of cookbooks, but something about midweek meals, it just connected with people. More people are cooking at home, and I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think the year that we've all had cooking for me, it's one good thing that's going to come out of this. So I'm absolutely unbelievable. I'll be sleeping with this tonight, so thank you so much. <laughs> I'm over the moon. Now, Nevin, evidence would suggest that for many people, they just read cookbooks. So presentation is all important. Tell us about how important it is for you when you write your cookbooks. Well, Evelyn, you know, for me, presentation is everything. So first of all, you eat with your eyes. So when you see some beautiful food photography, well, with this midweek meals, 
um, there's a there's a photograph for every single recipe. So people, when they cook, say, that's what I want it to look. You inspire people. That's how it should look. That's how I want it to look. So for me, it's very important. And especially this year, I think more and more people are cooking at home. So people are enjoying it. And once they see the finished product, they say, I want it to look that. You've got to inspire people. Nothing beats a cookbook in your hand to feel, touch it. I'm working on a new book that if you if you touch it and feel, you can actually taste the food. Am I joking? Would not be some, 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 some idea to have a cookbook like that. But I think to have a cookbook, you know, beside you when you're cook and I think that's really important and it's got to look lovely it's got to, it's got to be doable practical you know and you've got to want people to inspire I want to make this for my family thank you so much Nevin and huge congratulations again The next award is the National Book Token's Popular Fiction Book of the Year. And isn't it great that we live in a country where so many of our writers are household names? People like Marion Keyes and Paul Howard are among some of the biggest selling writers in the business. And both of those and so many others are shortlisted tonight. Presenting the award is Dawn Bean, proprietor of independent bookstore Woodbine Books in Kilcullen. But first, let's take a look at the nominations. National Book Token's Popular Fiction Book of the Year. The Glorious Guinness Girls by Emily Hurricane. Homestretch by Graham Norton. The Bird in the Bamboo Cage by Hazel Gaynor. Grown Ups by Marion Keyes. Greywatch by Ross O'Carroll Kelly. Here is the Beehive by Sarah Crossan. National Book Tokens is delighted to sponsor the award for popular fiction this year. And the award for National Book Token's Popular Fiction Book of the Year goes to... Graeme Norton for Homestretch. Congratulations, Graeme. Wow. Oh, thank you so much. That's amazing, amazing news. I'm, I, I can't tell you, I'm really, really thrilled. Uh, I'm so happy. Uh, I'm kind of really proud of this book, and it's great that it's it's found it's found an audience in Ireland. I'd like to thank everyone at Hachette Ireland, um, particularly uh, Jim Binchy and Elaine Egan and Sharon Plunkett, who really helped uh, get the book out there in this difficult time. Uh, everyone at Hodder in England and Coronet, especially Hannah Black, my editor, who really helped put the book together, and, and just. A quick shout out to booksellers up and down the land who have done an amazing job uh, getting books out to readers uh, come hell or high water. Readers have been so charmed by your village of Mullinmore and I'm just wondering for your next book, will we return to that same place? Uh, I probably won't go back to Mullinmore. I, I, at the end of each book, I sort of feel like uh, <laughs> I'm... I'm, uh, I'm sort of done done with the place. But in, in two years' time, there'll be uh, another book and hopefully I'll be with you and uh, the, <laughs> the, the booze will be flowing. Graeme, it's been lovely talking to you and hopefully when we see you next in person, we'll be able to put that theory to the test. I have to say, it's an absolute pleasure being here at the Museum of Literature Ireland, or Molly as it's become so affectionately known. And I can't think of a more appropriate location as a home for this year's awards show. So our next award tonight is the Irish Independent Crime Fiction Book of the Year. Now, P.D. James said, crime fiction confirms our belief that we live in a rational and moral universe. Hmm, maybe pre-COVID, but in fairness, there are other opinions available. And here in Ireland, this genre in particular is thriving like never before. Presenting the award tonight is Cormac Burke, editor of the Irish Independent and Independent.ie. But first, let's investigate the crime scene. Irish Independent Crime Fiction Book of the Year. The Nothing Man by Catherine Ryan Howard. The Cutting Place by Jane Casey. Our Little Cruelties by Liz Nugent. After the Silence by Louise O'Neill. The Guest List by Lucy Foley. 5050 by Steve Kavanagh. Thanks, Evelyn. Delighted this important event is continuing tonight, even if it has to be in virtual form. I'm thrilled to be here on behalf of the Irish Independent. The award for the Irish Independent Crime Fiction Book of the Year goes to Louise O'Neill for After the Silence. Oh, thank you so much. I am genuinely quite shocked. Um, you know, the, the books in this category are absolutely phenomenal. I think that Ireland has 
really become quite famous um, for the quality of the crime fiction that it's producing. So I feel, I just felt really honoured even to be in this category. Um, and now I just, I, I honestly, I can't believe it. So thank you so much um, to the Irish Book Awards um, and on post. And I must also say thank you to my agent, Juliet Mushins, um, who has been just an incredible support throughout this whole journey. Um, to John Riley, my editor at Quirkus. Um, and a special thank you to Elaine Egan at Hachette, who put together such an incredible publicity campaign. And I cannot um, leave without thanking my partner, Richard Chambers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Louise, and huge congratulations again. Don't forget that you at home can have a hand in supporting your favourite book by voting for the Unpussed Irish Book of the Year. Voting opens after the show and you can vote at unpustedirishbookawards.ie. The overall winner will be announced by Miriam O'Callaghan on the Unpussed Irish Book of the Year show on RT1 at quarter past ten on the 10th of December. Now next up tonight is the RTE Radio 1's Listener's Choice Award. Radio listeners, of course, are passionate readers. And this year, you took to the web and voted in your thousands to support your favourite books. And to announce the winner tonight is Miriam O'Callaghan. But first, a reminder of the nominations. RTE Radio 1 Listener's Choice Award. Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McAnulty. A Light That Never Goes Out by Keelan Shanley. OK, let's do your stupid idea by Patrick Frame. The Wild Laughter by Kylan Hughes. Love by Roddy Doyle. Good evening. Well, look, it's my great honour to present the RT Radio 1 Listener's Choice Award. And the award goes to... I'm absolutely thrilled to say it goes to my former colleague and dear friend, Keelan Shani, for her memoir, A Light That Never Goes Out. And of course, sadly, Keelan's no longer with us, but here to accept her award is her husband, Connor Ferguson. Well, Miriam, thank you so much. Um, well, thank you personally for, for helping us get over the line with this. It's, it's amazing to win this award. Keenan would be so happy uh, and, and so honoured to, to win this award from uh, the Listener's Choice Award because she, she loved the radio anyway. She loved being on the radio. She loved talking about books. So it is, it's a perfect award for her. But I, I, I need to thank all the people who, who got us here um, to... Uh, Neve O'Connor from RT, who, who, who really pushed Keelan into, bullied Keelan really into, into writing this book. Uh, Katrina Perry, who suggested she talk to Marianne Gunn O'Connor. Uh, I want to thank Marianne, she's a brilliant agent. She really, really fought for it. Well, she really just pushed this book to make it happen. Uh, to Gill Books, who couldn't have been nicer and couldn't have done a better job producing a beautiful book to exactly the kind of um, standards that Keelan would have, would have loved. You know, I think it's a really lovely book. So I want to really thank Gil Books, especially to uh, Alison Walsh, who works with Gil. Um, she was Keelan's editor. She became Keelan's friend. She really dragged this book out of Keelan, and I think she did an amazing job. And, and I'm just delighted to be able to hold this award up and, and, and honour Keelan in this way. So thank you. Connor, huge congratulations on winning this award tonight. And I must say, standing here this evening at the Book Awards, I really miss Keelan because, of course, we had such fun at Book Awards over the years. And for you, winning this award at the Book Awards, it must be particularly bittersweet. But it's just the way I look at it, really. It's, it's sort of the perfect end to the story, you know? I mean, it, it's sad that she's gone and she's, she won't be here. She's not here to, to do the talking that I have to do because uh, she'd be better at it. But... That is sad, but but we do have to go. Well, she won a, she won this award for a book that tells the story of her life, and that's 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 a really um, triumphant kind of feeling, I suppose. It's a sort of punching the air moment for for us at the you know right now. Thank you so much, Connor, for joining us this evening. Next up is the Journal.ie Best Irish Published Book of the Year. And with the eruption of Zoom calls in all our lives this year, we've all become intimately familiar with the bookshelves of friends and colleagues. And the winner of this category in particular should stand out on anybody's shelf and be a talking point. Presenting the award is the managing editor of Journal Media, Susan Daly. But first, let's take a look at the nominations. Journal.ie Best Irish Published Book of the Year. 
A Ghost in the Throat by Diren Nigriofa. An Irish Nature Year by Jane Powers, illustrated by Robert Vaughan. Old Ireland in Colour, John Breslin and Dr. Sarah Ann Buckley. 32 Words for Field by Monchon McGann. A Page from My Life by Ray Darcy. Twilight Together by Ruth Medjber. Thanks so much, Evelyn. Has there ever been a year more important than this one in which to celebrate the resilience of Irish writers, Irish imprints and Irish creativity? We are so happy to continue our support of this special category. And the award goes to... John Breslin and Dr Sarah Ann Buckley for Old Ireland in Colour. Hey! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm delighted! That's brilliant. <laughs> oh, that's great. We're, we're so delighted to win this award for Best Irish Published Book. It's a huge honour and, you know, I think to start off, we have to thank our fantastic publishing team of Connor, Pa, Maeve and Grace at Merriam Press and uh, Peter, our publicist. We'd also like to thank our families for all their support and, of course, the journal.ie for sponsoring this category in the OnPost Irish Book Awards. Thanks also to our Colouroonies, the Old Ireland in Colour online community, who have given us feedback on everything from eye and hair colours to tweeds and shawls. And the Irish people are really the stars of the book at home and abroad. And we just want to thank them and their history. And it's really been a privilege for us to be able to shine a light on them and to try and bring this past into the present. So thank you so much again. Thank you. Readers have been enamoured by the photographs presented in this book, all walks of life represented there. Have you been surprised, though, by the power of the reaction from readers? Yeah, Evelyn, it really has been beyond our expectations. We, we knew there was a, a great social media following through uh, John's Old Ireland and Colour project, but the reaction, people have been sharing their images of receiving their books on Instagram and Facebook. And there's been some really unexpected groups. So teachers have been getting in touch to say that they've been using it in class. And it's also been used in a lot of other settings like care homes and places where people are, I guess, reminiscing about the past and about this history. And we know Irish people love history. Well, congratulations to both of you this evening on winning the award and thank you for joining us. Our next award is the Odgers Bernstein Non-Fiction Book of the Year in association with The Business Post. Non-fiction writers deal with facts and real events, but the best of them succeed in taking that research and turning their books into powerful page turners. This is always a highly competitive category, so let's find out who wins tonight. The award is presented by Odgers Bernstein managing partner Mark O'Donnell, but first let's scroll through the nominations. Odgers Bernstein Non-Fiction Book of the Year in association with The Business Post. A Ghost in the Throat by Diren Lichriefa. Beyond the Tape by Mary Cassidy. Notes from an Apocalypse by Mark O'Connell. Here's the Story by Mary McAleese. The Arms Crisis of 1970, The Plot That Never Was by Michael Heaney. Tell Me the Truth About Loss by Neil Fitzpatrick. And the award goes to... Diren Lichriefa for a ghost in the throat. Thank you so much. Oh my God, I'm so delighted. And I really want to thank everyone at the Irish Book Awards and all the readers and all the mighty booksellers. I'll always be very grateful to Sarah and Lisa and Laura at Tram Press who picked my book from their slush file and published it so beautifully with help from Fiocra and Marta and Peter and also to Brendan Barrington and Sarah Baum for all their help. I want to thank my parents and my sisters, Evelyn and Fina, and my children and my husband, Tim, who's just incredible. And finally, I'd like to dedicate this award to my Nana May, a woman of great elegance and great heart who'll be wafting at home in Kilnamona. And I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for her. So thank you, Nana. This is for you. So well done again and congratulations. Next up, it's the Borthgosh Energy Sports Book of the Year. And this year's shortlist brings together heroes of rugby, football and horse racing. 
and alongside them two explosive whistleblower accounts of foul play in Irish soccer and the Olympic Games. Presenting the award tonight is David Kerwin, Managing Director of Board Gosh Energy. Let's take a look at the nominations. Board Gosh Energy Sportsbook of the Year. True Colours by Barry Geraghty with Niall Kelly. The Hill, my autobiography by Bernard Brogan with Kieran Shannon. The Russian Affair by David Walsh. Champagne Football by Mark Tighe and Paul Rowan. No Hiding, my autobiography by Rob Carney with David Walsh. Fuel by Sean O'Brien with Jerry Thornley. As a long-time supporter of these awards, we in Borgosh Energy are thrilled to see them go ahead this year. Now more than ever, it's critical that we celebrate the importance of this industry and books and reading to Irish society. This ca category combines two passions of mine, sports and reading. And so it is with great pleasure I can reveal the 2020 Borgosh Energy Sports Book of the Year Award goes to Mark Ty and Paul Rowan for Champagne Football. It's fantastic news and, um, you know, really delighted that I think a lot of people would have voted for us on, on the poll online and to get that backing from the public in general is, is really great. Mark and I put a, a huge amount of effort into, into writing this book and, um, you know, we, we got a lot of new material for it as well. So. We've really been delighted with the kind of response it's got in terms of sales. And, and then to get this award as well on top of that is, you know, it, it's really uh, quite a special moment, actually, for me anyway, and I'm sure for Mark as well. I suppose it's great that, you know, we're both journalists and, you know, we're, we're all about breaking stories and, you know, telling a good story and making it, you know, readable. So for you know, to get recognition for what's, you know, investigative journalism, you'd hope that this would encourage, you know, publishers to, to you know, uh, seek more kind of books like this or to encourage journalists to go, do those kind of deep, 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 deep investigations, you know, and, and bring that in all together. So, you know, I'd, I'd like, to, you know, there, there isn't a lot of those kind of books in, in the Irish market, but you should, clearly there's a huge appetite for that kind of work, you know, that kind of read. Congratulations again to both of you and thank you so much for your time this evening. And now we have the Specsafer's Children's Book of the Year Junior. The great Dr. Zeus said that you're never too old, too wacky or too wild to pick up a book and read to a child. Agreed. Now we're delighted that Carol is staying on with us, but first, the nominations. Specsavers Children's Book of the Year, Junior. The Great Irish Farm Book by Darren McCullough, illustrated by Sally Caldwell. While We Can't Hug by Owen McLaughlin, illustrated by Polly Dunbar. What We'll Build by Oliver Jeffers. The Dead Zoo by Peter Donnelly. The Haunted Lake by PJ Lynch. Will You Be My Friend by Sam McBratney, illustrated by Anita Jaram. Thank you, Evelyn. I am delighted to be with you tonight to present these awards on behalf of Specsavers. And in a year that has seen so much change, we are delighted to continue in our sponsorship of the children's categories this year, marking our 10th year as a sponsor. And the award for the Specsavers Children's Book of the Year junior category goes to Dara McCullough for the Great Irish Farm Book illustrated by Sally Caldwell. Congratulations, Dara and Sally. Hey. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks so much, everybody. Um, this is such an honour. Never in my wildest dreams did I expect to be at this point winning a national award, let alone being nominated for one. Um, and of course, my heartfelt thanks to Sally for putting in such an amazing stellar performance. I stuffed the book with lots of facts, but she made it sing. It was, a, it was a joint effort, joint effort. <laughs> yeah, and thanks as well to all the people who voted. We've had such an amazing reaction from all over the country to the book, uh, young and old. It just goes to show Ireland still has a really close connection with the land. It's part of the culture, and it's just been such a privilege to work in this book. And thanks to Gil for um, asking me to be involved. It was an amazing project and amazing to work with you, Dara. It was just the most fun, actually. <laughs> you, 
you made it really, really, really special. So yeah, it was great. And thanks, I second, thanks to Gil. Thanks to my lovely husband and kids who held my hand through the, <laughs> through the whole thing when deadlines were tight and everything. So yeah, just amazing, amazing news. Now, Sally, this presented a massive challenge to an illustrator. So can you explain and describe the collaboration you had with Dara, bringing the book to life? It was a really, really interesting process because it was such an open brief and I had complete creative freedom, thanks to Dara and Gail. You know, I really could do what I liked. So it was just an amazing opportunity, it was an amazing project to work on. Occasionally we had to, you know, finesse what the difference between a Charolais and a limousine and, you know, <laughs> that backside isn't really a beef cow and uh, <laughs> what a milk truck really looks like. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, make the thighs bigger and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, there was very specific uh, directions on some of the Thank you so much to both of you and have a lovely evening. Our next award is the Specsavers Children's Book of the Year Senior. And it is never too early for young readers to be challenged with books that take them out of their bedrooms and into the wide, wide world. So where better to start than with some of these marvellous children's books? Presenting the award tonight is Carol Hickey, chairman of Specsavers Ireland. But first, here are the nominations. Specsavers Children's Book of the Year, Senior. The Boldness of Betty by Anna Carey. Miracle on Ebenezer Street by Catherine Doyle. Is There Anybody Out There? by Dara O'Brien, illustrated by Luna Valentine. Girls Play 2, inspiring stories of Irish sportswomen by Jackie Hurley. Illustrated by Sinead Colleran, Rachel Corcoran, Jennifer Farley, Jennifer Murphy and Lauren O'Neill. The Story of Croke Park by Michal O'Murrahertig, illustrated by Graeme Corcoran. Break the Mould by Sinead Burke, illustrated by Natalie Byrne. And the award for the Specsavers Children's Book of the Year Senior category goes to... Sinead Burke for Break the Mould, illustrated by Natalie Byrne. Congratulations, Sinead and Natalie. That's me. Wow, um, this is my award. I'm going to place it right here beside Break the Mould where it deserves. Thank you so much to Unpust, to Specsavers, to the judges, to those who voted for this incredible award. Break the Mould was written to give people hope, whether that be children, parents or adults, and an era where we seem more divided than ever. The idea that a book that is about making the world a safe place for people to just be themselves, whatever identity that might be, fills me with enormous pride. This book would be impossible without my publishers, Ren and Rook, my parents, Kat and Chris, my siblings, Natasha and Eve, Chris, Chloe, my incredible friends. And this book sits in a category alongside stories and writers that have shaped this country and the world. I'm incredibly proud to accept this award. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, firstly, to Sinead for writing this wonderful book and the publishers for making it happen and every single person who has bought the book or supported the book in any way um, we couldn't have done it without you graduating from primary school to secondary next up is the department 51 at Eason teen young adult book of the year now, we're living in what's called a golden age of young adult fiction, and the wonderful news is that Irish writers are right there in the heart of that movement. And presenting the award tonight is Davina Milligan, Easton's Senior Category Manager for Books. But first, let's take a look at the nominations. Department 51 at Easton, Teen and Young Adult Book of the Year. The Falling in Love Montage by Kira Smith. Savage Her Reply by Deirdre Sullivan illustrated by Karen Vaughan. Queen of Coin and Whispers by Helen Corcoran. Gone Book by Helena Close. On Midnight Beach by Mary Louise Fitzpatrick. Hope Against Hope by Sheena Wilkinson. Thank you, Evelyn. It's great to be with you this evening and to present this award on behalf of Eason. I'd like to say a big congratulations to all the nominees on the shortlist. And so without further ado, the award for the Department 51 Eason Teen Young Adult Book of the Year goes to Dear De Sullivan for Savage Her Reply, illustrated by Karen Vaughan. Oh my God. Hey. <laughs> Check it out. Um, oh. um, 
Um, I'm blown away by this. Um, we both are. Uh, what an honour to be nominated alongside some of the books that have provided us with such escape through lockdown and to share this award with Karen Vaughan, whose work consistently moves and enthralls me. When I was writing Saboteur Reply, I thought about isolation a lot. What it would be like to be in the world, but not of the world, to look, but not to touch. I had no idea that it would be published at a time where we all shoulder a little bit of Aoife's punishment, albeit with fewer angry swans. Um, I want to thank Unpus, Department 51, and the librarians and booksellers who have bolstered me through lockdown. My writer friends, especially Sarah, Dave and Claire for their encouragement. My publisher, Little Island, Matthew, Kate, Elizabeth, and particularly Siobhan Parkinson, to whom this book is dedicated. Heartfelt gratitude to my agent, Claire Wallace, and all at Darley Anderson for their wisdom, kindness, and skill. To my family, near and far, I'm thinking of you. And to Jeremith, my best friend in my home. Um, who came with me to lakes, portal tombs and mountains as we followed in the webbed footsteps of the Children of Aid. I'm really excited for the next adventure. Congratulations again on your award. Shane Grotham loves Lara Gailga and Shaid Grotham Ella Doyne Nacht. Agus is Kelora on Dushod and Tovach the Winnell and Gailga in Sail Natira. It's more than true egg, more than it than our Scrivener in Nacht, Joe Steve O'Nachton. Ni won't scream nor vion of Ashtor because God tovach to Geltach, go she boss in Mianer, or yes, Jager of Anam Dilish. Ach Lina Nacht, Hun Dus show Vron and the Ambassador, Le Love Lara Geilge Blond at Nihuffi, Axer Dus, shut and list the Amduhon. Love Lara Geilge, Irish language, Book of the Year. Aiden, Scrita Egg Dermot Johnson. Balach Nespoinach, Scrita Egg Liam McCoy. Curry Gale, Scrita Egg Celia Defrena. Kunov, Shkrita Egg, Owen McGillivrida. Muskal Yira, Shkrita Egg, Etna Nigalachor. On Zeol Delta, Shkrita Egg, Joe Steve O'Nachton. Gurmagath Evelyn, and I'm delighted to be with you all this evening. La Gradam Love Lara Gaelge, Yaur Nablena, Oria Egg Forest Nagaelge, at Ogurts. Agsambutur. Krav. The old Macalivrida, Cohort of Zone. You could mean my gift, a shin, you know, my dream nation. It's on our war do. Do a shall. You could mean my gift, Dan, and your Hodilum and your shock or like yellow. Um, could you mean my gift, da, da shanka hella colon, or then you occlude that or two? I guess could my gift, da, he won a scully, or then you log on a mag, is that Vihala Donald? Again, in the Cope Agarar to do a goni can mean my Higgins. I guess Kedim Gramayga da the Moher as and Takia to Hogshi do goni is made a mon pen, you guess a mon screaming art. Gramina my Higgins was this on our war to do a shaw, the Lotu. Gramina Magat own August fair play with. And that brings us to the Ireland AM popular non-fiction book of the year, traditionally a rich source for those blockbusting Christmas bestsellers. And there's some wonderful books on this year's shortlist, with six nominees bringing us the stories of their extraordinary lives in their own words. Ireland AM popular non-fiction book of the year. Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McAnulty. A Light That Never Goes Out by Keelan Shanley. Never mind the bollocks, here's the science by Luke O'Neill. A Guarded Life by Magella Moynihan with Aoife Kelleher. Being the Super Vet by Noel Fitzpatrick. Winging It by Tommy Tiernan. Thanks, Evelyn. I'm delighted to be with you tonight to present our award. Here on Ireland AM, we love meeting authors and celebrating the rich talent in Irish literature. So, without further ado, the Ireland AM Popular Nonfiction Award goes to... Drumroll, please. Mm -hmm. The award goes to... Luke O'Neill for Nevermind the... Here's the signs. Congratulations, Luke. Josh, that's fantastic news. Thanks very much. I'm overjoyed. That's my third time being uh, nominated. Third time lucky, so I'm delighted. This is the year for science, isn't it, after all? If I hadn't won, I would have been a scandal. <laughs> but I want to thank some people. Very importantly, uh, Gil, obviously my publisher, did a fantastic job. Sarah Liddy, who was the commissioning editor. Sarah suggested it. 
Didn't expect the word bollocks to be in the title, but that's a good thing to mention. And then Evie Malumbi was the editor. She was brilliant. She really helped me with the editing in all kinds of ways. And everybody at Gill. And then all the people who helped me, because uh, I got people to read various chapters. I won't go through all the names. So a big thanks to everybody who helped me. Well done, Luke, on winning this award tonight. And I'm just thinking it has been such an unusual year for all of us. And you've been right at the heart of all the discussions around COVID-19. So what does winning this award tonight mean for you? Well, it's, it's been very busy. I wrote the book before COVID, actually, which is the first thing to say. And then uh, when I got the proofs in April, of course, I had to put COVID references into it. And that was easy because there's chapters on vaccines and various things. But it's been a big part of the year for me because the book came out, obviously, when I'm very busy with the media anyway. And it's been quite useful. I guess a good analogy is it's like two buses came along at the same time, the COVID bus and this bus, you know, with the book. So it's great that the two are together, I suppose. Very timely. Congratulations again, Luke, and thank you so much for being such a sane voice in the middle of all the madness of 2020. Here at Mali, they are very proud of their education programmes and the museum is actively nurturing the next generation of Irish writers. Indeed, you too can be here writing your first important lines. Next up is the Sunday Independent Newcomer of the Year. Now, in this year, new writers have been denied the thrill of their launch parties or even reading at book festivals. This has not been a normal year for the debutantes of 2020. So we're delighted tonight to take the opportunity to congratulate these six talented newbies on bringing their first books into the world. Presenting the award is literary editor of the Sunday Independent, Madeleine Keane. But first, let's take a look at those nominations. Sunday Independent Newcomer of the Year. Diary of a Young Naturalist by Dara McAnulty. Big Girl, Small Town by Michelle Gallen. Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. This Happy by Neve Campbell. OK, Let's Do Your Stupid Idea by Patrick Frayne. The Temple House Vanishing by Rachel Dunahoo. Thank you, Evelyn. It's a pleasure to be here. And as always, it's an honour and a privilege for the Sunday Independent to sponsor this award, which since its inception in 2007, has honoured a wonderful array of new Irish writing talent. This year, the Sunday Independent Newcomer of the Year Award goes to Dara McAnulty for Diary of a Young Naturalist. Oh my God, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. This means so much to me and not just um, because I won this incredible, incredible award, but also because I'm a young person. I hope this sends out a message to you young people that we can, we can write and we can share our hope, our dreams and our love of the natural world out into the world. I'd like to thank all of the shortlisted authors because their writings have been incredible and it's an honour to have been shortlisted alongside them. I'd also like to give a heartfelt thanks to all of the readers who voted for me and the literate uh, Irish Literary Academy. I'd also like to extend my gratitude and thanks to Little Toller um, Books who decided to take me on and publish me because that means so much to me to be able to put my words out there. And of course, I'd like to um, thank all my family for all of the support that they've given me throughout the years because I couldn't have done it without them. Well, thank you for joining us this evening and huge congratulations to you again. Now we come to the Listow Writers Week Poem of the Year. And throughout this difficult year, many of us, including our politicians, have turned to poets like Seamus Heaney and the late Derek Mahan for solace and inspiration. Even Joe Biden is at it. But when Mahan tells us that everything is going to be all right, we receive the balm of poetry with gratitude. And the tradition lives on in the work of four fine poets shortlisted for the Listow Award tonight. Presenting the award is the chairperson of Listow Writers Week, Catherine Moylan, and here are the nominations. Doe Writers Week, Poem of the Year, Through the Ears of a Fish by Eleanor Hooker, Terminarch by Joe Burns, In the Museum of Misremembered Things by Linda McKenna, Triskel by Catherine Ann Cullum. Good evening from the Kerry Writers Museum in Listow County, Kerry. Thanks to Unpost for continuing this wonderful collaboration with us here in the Stone Writers Week. And tonight, the award for the Stone Writers Week Poem of the Year goes to Linda McKenna for Museum of Misremembered Things. Congratulations, Linda. 
Thank you very much. That's absolutely hugely unexpected. I'm absolutely thrilled. Uh, thank you. It's fantastic news. Um, thanks to everybody at On Post and the Irish Book Awards and to the Stowe Writers Week. Um, it was very unexpected. Thrilled to have been shortlisted alongside such great poets as Joe Burns, Eleanor Hooker and Catherine Ann Cullen. Thanks to everybody who voted for the poem. So it was great that you all took the time to read it and vote for it. Um, but a big a special thanks to Lisa Frank and John Walsh at Dura Press. Dura Press for publishing my debut collection um, and getting it out and about and promoting it and to the Arts Council of Northern Ireland for supporting the publication. It's especially great to win this year because this is Dura Press's 10th anniversary year. So to win it in this year is a huge honour and I'm absolutely humbled and thank you all very much. Thank you so much, Linda, and congratulations again on winning this award this evening. Next up is the writing.ie short story of the year. And the short story is yet another genre in which Irish writers excel. Since Frank O'Connor wrote the first confession, short stories have enchanted readers, and each of the shortlisted writers tonight have given us marvellous glimpses into their fictional worlds. Presenting the award is founder of writing.ie, Vanessa Fox O'Loughlin, but first, here are the nominations. Writing.ie Short Story of the Year The Emperor of Russia by Jackie McCarrick Margaret McNaughton by Kit DeWall I Ate It All and I Really Thought I Wouldn't by Quaylen Hughes Supermarket Flowers by Dermot Bulger You and Him by Louise Kennedy Wild Flowers by Billy O'Callaghan I'm delighted that Writing.ie is sponsoring the Short Story of the Year Award again this year at the Anne Post Irish Book Awards. Writing.ie is all about creating opportunities for writers. And this award is open to all published writers of short stories, giving new writers the chance to rub shoulders with the greats. And this year, again, we have another amazing shortlist. But now it's time to find out who the winner is. I have the envelope right here. And the award for the Writing.ie Short Story of the Year goes to Keelan Hughes for I Ate It All and I Really Thought I Wouldn't. Congratulations, Keelan, from everybody at Writing.ie. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> it's lovely to have this. It's the heftiest thing I own now. <laughs> um, I want to thank, first of all, Lisa Frank from Doira Press, uh, who invited me to contribute something to Galway Stories, the anthology, and that, to LitHub, who published it online afterwards. Um, the short story form is on fire in Ireland, and it's brilliant to be recognised as a story writer, um, especially as I've um, only published novels. And um, it's an honour as well to have been on the Novel of the Year and the Listener's Choice Award uh, shortlists for The Wild Laughter. Um, my indie publishers of The Wild Laughter uh, deserve uh, thanks because they have just been tirelessly supportive, including of my stories, and uh, also to booksellers and reviewers who've been keeping the cobwebs off our stories this year. And it is vital work. Congratulations again on winning this award, Caelan. And so we come to our final award this evening, the Eason Novel of the Year. And presenting the award is Eason Group Head of Books and Marketing, Brendan Corbett. And so for the last time tonight, let's take a look at the nominations. Eason Novel of the Year, Actress by Anne Enright. The Wild Laughter by Quaylen Hughes. Strange Flowers by Donal Ryan. As You Were by Elaine Feeney. The Pull of the Stars by Emma Donoghue. Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Thanks, Evelyn. At Easton, we're immensely proud of our long association with the Irish Book Awards, and I'm delighted to be here with you tonight to present our award. Now, let's see who the winner is. And the award for Easton Novel of the Year goes to Dona Ryan for Strange Flowers. Congratulations, Dona. <laughs> oh, wow, it's incredible. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, thank you so much to everyone who voted for Strange Flowers um, and to the Irish Book Awards for this honour. Um, it's incredible. Um, thanks to my editor, Brian Langan, and to Fiona Murphy for your friendship and kindness and for saving this book from me, basically. Um, thanks so much to my family for your constant love and support, um, to my kids, Thomas and Lucy. You guys are the best. And to Anne-Marie, my best friend, my hero, and the love of my life, this is for you. 
Congratulations, Donal, on winning this award this evening. And you're an old friend of ours here at the Book Awards. And I'm just wondering, is it as exciting for you to win this award tonight as when you won your very first one? Oh, God, yeah, Evelyn, it actually means, it means so much. Um, I mean, this is my first time winning Novel of the Year, and it's just a huge honour. It just feels great. Um, so I just, I can't believe it, really, to be honest. It's just, it's, it's fantastic. And the fact that the um, awards, you know, are, are, are voted for by readers makes it so special. Um, it's just, it really is a huge privilege for any writer. And I mean, the shortlist was so strong. I mean, you know, it's, it's a shortlist of people I really admire and friends of mine who wrote amazing books. And I mean, it, it could have been any of us. Um, it's just, it's a fantastic feeling. So congratulations and well done again on winning the award, Donal. And hopefully we'll see you back live and in person in libraries and at events again. And that's us almost done for tonight. And remember that you, the readers, still have an important part to play in deciding the overall Unpost Irish Book of the Year, which will be chosen by a public vote from the list of tonight's winners. To vote for your book, just log on to unpostirishbookawards.ie. The voting is open now, and five lucky voters will win €100 Euro worth of national book tokens. The overall winning book will then be revealed on RT1 at quarter past ten on the 10th of December. And before we close, a word from the Chairman of the Unpust Irish Book Awards, Mr John Tracy. On behalf of the Board of Unpust Irish Book Awards, I would like to add my congratulations to all of the authors involved here this evening. Your work represents the very best of Irish writing. But books alone are nothing without readers. So I would urge book lovers throughout Ireland to sample some of the books that you've seen here tonight and consider purchasing them for gifts at Christmas. Let's also consider the Irish bookseller, who has seen his busiest trading period seriously affected over the last year. Irish writers, Irish readers, Irish booksellers. Now there's an alliance that we can all support. Thank you for listening. Keep safe and a very good night to you all. So that's it from us here at Molly tonight. And a huge thanks to everybody who helped to make tonight's event such a success. And thanks to you at home for watching. So for now, Sloan Agus Balacht.